And without further ado, our next speaker, Professor Nir Bartzilai, thank you so much for being here. I think he doesn't uh, require any introduction. We are very much looking forward to his contribution. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, terrific. I'm so excited for uh, this day. And I'm so excited to be here, not as a, a biological or genetic researcher, but a, as an MD, and tell you a little bit about the volunteer job that I'm doing uh, with some of the background that Michael and, and Alex have uh, laid before. And last time we met, the people that belongs to the Health and Longevity Medicine Society was in May in Tel Aviv where Sippy Strauss launched her longevity center. And uh, during the talks, during Rafa Cabo talk, we were under attack and you see an Israel missile on the left uh, targeting a missile that came from uh, Gaza. Uh, they came to Rafa and said, you, we have to go to the shelter now. And Rafa said, well, that's a novel way to get rid of a boring uh, speaker. <laughs> <laughs> but really the point is that even without the drama around, a tar targeting health span has become a critically exciting field. And the proof of it is, the, is you, how many of you are here, and what's the diversity of people here. So I want to make a few points and uh, end with a very important clip of movie. Uh, but really to underline few facts in every slide that I'll show you, and, and that is that life expectancy was 20 and 30 to 30 years during most of 100,000 years or so of human evolution. And really the progress that we've done that was amazing, okay, tripling our lifespan has been only in the last uh, 150 years or so. But it came with a price, and the price was that after age 60, we started to get age-related disease, their treatment, another age-related disease, the treatment, the combination of the treatment that could be uh, toxic, and basically a a ending in a bad quality of life. But the reason I'm showing you this slide is mainly to highlight the fact that most of the things we've done were prevention, okay? We harnessed the agriculture, we cleaned the water, we built sewers, we have uh, immuniza immunization, right? Uh, they were the major component of what happened. And we need to remember that because, yes, the drugs we have will target diseases of aging, but our goal is to prevent those diseases, okay? So it's about prevention, primary prevention, sec secondary uh, preve prevention. Um, the reason, the, the reason, the, the thing that really get us as a community here from the gyro science perspective is we, the, we acknowledge that there's those hallmarks of aging. Each one of us uh, draw them differently. But the reason I'm showing you this slide is that those hallmarks of aging are interacting with each other in the sense that you can target any one of those. And in your animals or in humans, you'll see extension of health span and lifespan. And, and uh, I, I think this is important to note because when investors come and say, what do you have? And you have something that, uh, you know, is targeting autophagy, okay? Targeting autophagy will mean that you're going to improve mitochondria health, metabolic health, and many other things. And that's a very important thing. By the way, to be a hallmark of aging, in my definition, is you have to show that something is wrong with aging, and if you correct it, okay, then your animals will live, uh, will live longer. It's not strictly applied yet to all uh, all our uh, hallmarks, and I would say that not all our hallmarks are, are there yet. In fact, I think the last uh, hallmarks that we have are 12 hallmarks trying to prioritize them. But another important point is gerotherapeutics. Gerotherapeutics are, if to, to be a gerotherapeutics, you're going to show that this does more 
than targeting one hallmark of aging. This is very common, certainly to those four that I mentioned here, which are metformin, rapamycin, SGLT inhibitor, and, and GLP agonist. They target more, more than one, and I'll make a, a point about that. So what I want to uh, talk about is uh, what, uh, what, what we want people to know, what we want uh, physicians to know about geroscience. And I want to make here a very important remark, and, that's the, and then I'm moving to the second point. Uh, those of you who are PhD only, raise your hands. Okay, substantial amount. So I'm talking only to you now. When we MDs go to medical school, in the first day, we learn, do no harm. That makes us conservative, okay? That means that 50% of us will not do anything to help you. Because even Tylenol in one in a million can destroy your liver, okay? This is who we are. The second day of medical school, and there's no, there's no always and no never in medicine. You can have a drug that will save 100 people and it kills three. What do you do about it? Okay, that's who we are. We are conservative and also unsure of ourselves. And that explains why it's so frustrating and takes so long to get uh, drugs out to, out to the market. And more than that, I would tell you, people who work in the FDA, they went only to those two days of medical school, okay? So that's not, that's not helping out. Okay, so what we really want is we want a drug that in a five-year study will show to decrease mortality effectively. This is, of course, assuming that this drug is a, a improving health span. And actually, the side effect will be longev longevity. Not everybody can afford that, okay? But we're targeting health span. And are you asking, is, are there drugs that have shown that? Absolutely. Metformin has shown that. SGLT2 inhibitors showed it. GLP-1 agonists have shown it. Um, and they have extended health span and lifespan uh, as well. I want to make a point about metformin because this will take me to how we deal with the FDA, but, and we can draw it to any drug out there. You can see here on the bottom, the, those, those brownish uh, circles are all those hallmarks of aging. There are nine hallmarks of aging here, okay? And metformin works in many ways, okay? On the left, it uh, has a metabolic pathway. And at the end of that, there, it hits already five of the hallmarks of aging. But metformin also is not only metabolic, it prevents uh, oxidative damage, so there's a whole other things that metformin are doing. And at the end, metformin is hitting all the hallmarks of aging. Now you're saying, really, you know? One, one drug does that, and I think, and by the way, we used to fight a lot about the mechanism of action of metformin for a simple reason. If you have a gerotherapeutic, okay, so it hits, you know, and you're looking at the hallmarks of aging, what it does, and I don't know where it, it's doing it there, it takes an old cell or an old organ or an old body and make it younger. And when it makes it younger, you can measure lots of things that have improved. That's why the hallmarks are interactive, okay? And I could give the same talk about rapamycin, okay? And, and some of the other drugs. They're doing something that is, gero, that is gerotherapeutics, that heals the hallmark of aging, and that's why we're measuring that. And we don't have to fight on, on what is the mechanism except acknowledge that it gives us a lot of pipeline and lo a lot of uh, information. Uh, so, Metformin, as I said, is not the only drug. When we looked a couple of years ago about all the FDA-approved drugs that are all also geroscience, uh, have, have base in geroscience, we have those drugs, the one that's 
uh, not here is the GLP-1 um, agonist because at that time, we didn't know that when you give it to mice, even without losing weight, they, they would live longer, okay? And not, not only healthier. So that's missing from here. But what we've done is we've done an exercise where the maximal you could get is 12 points. Six of them will be basically preclinical, pre hallmarks of aging, extension of lifespan. And six points will be human health span and human uh, mortality. And there are different ways of how we gave those points, uh, whether it's hallmarks, whether the ITP showed longevity, from a human point of view, if it was observational study or, we, or was it a clinical study, etc. I'm not going into that, but just to be impressed that we have lots of drugs. And the point about that is once you have a drug that is approved for whatever disease you want to, any doctor can repurpose that. Doctors repurpose uh, metformin to treat polycystic ovary syndrome, okay? So basically, there's no, burden, there's no burden on physicians to say, I can take this drug and give it to another person. But they're conservative, right? And they're also unsure of themselves. And there are trade-offs for everything else. So, so th that's one, two thing. So uh, I, I think the one that went up the chart a lot is those SGLT2 inhibitors, really interesting drugs. The ITPF showed that if you give it to mice, they live longer. And in clinical studies, uh, and not, not, you know, those are 30 months clinical studies. It decreased um, uh, heart disease, kidney disease, overall mortality, uh, quite impressive effects within a few months of, of therapy. So that, that's an example for what's going on. So I want to talk about metformin because I want to tell you why we, you know, uh, geroscientists went to the FDA and wanted to do a trial around metformin. And by the way, metformin is an anti-diabetic drug, but it didn't start that way. In the 1920s to 1950s, it, it's an it's a extract of French lilac, but it was used for arthritis, to prevent flu, you know, for many other things when it was noted that in diabetics, their, their glucose comes down and it became an anti-diabetic drug. But thanks God for that, because there's a lot of clinical studies around, around metformin. There's the famous DPP trial that showed that in non-diabetic metformin prevents diabetes. There are intervention studies that show that metformin is superior to decreased cardiovascular disease. There are over 250 studies showing that metformin is associated with less cancer in patients with diabetes. Their association intervention on cognitive decline, MCI, Alzheimer, and, uh, and there are lots of studies that showed lower mortality in uh, patients uh, with diabetes who are, uh, who are uh, on metformin. But I think the most interesting study that was missed, uh, and it's recent, there are actually nine papers around the world during COVID that reported that people in metformin had half the mortality and half of the hospitalization, which led to a clinical study where non-diabetic patients were given metformin within three days of COVID, and it decreased hospitalization, mortality, and long COVID by over 40%. And I think it also ties metformin to those hallmarks of aging, because Metformin is also getting the immune system to be younger. And it's not only the immune system because metformin makes the whole body more resilient to a severe disease that kills uh, the elderly mainly. So metformin is a perfect tool to go to the FDA and say, hey, you know, why don't we uh, consider uh, metformin? Now, why metformin is not uh, approved? Because Healthcare, because if the, if the FDA doesn't help us and say, hey, we can prevent diseases of aging, then healthcare providers don't have to pay for a drug. Which, by the way, is not a problem with metformin because metformin is the cheapest, it's generic, it's the cheapest drug in the US formulary. 
but also because pharmaceuticals were, were not, by the way, were not presented here. I, I hope next year there'll be more pharmaceuticals. Uh, but pharmaceuticals are not going to develop a drug before they have a clear okay that, that, that you know, they have a business plan too, so they, they need to have uh, something. And so uh, um, you can look at what we're doing in uh, the TAME study, but I want to really spend time and explain why it's so weird for people to understand. Uh, we're taking elderly people, and only 3,000 of them. And we don't care what disease they have. We don't care what disease they are going to have. I, I don't want to say not care. We're agnostic, I would say. Because I don't know if your mother is diabetic and you're obese, you're going to get next diabetes. Okay? For every disease you're going to get, you're going to get a point over, over time. Because we're targeting the aging and we're preventing all the diseases over time. This is kind of a concept that's hard to get. And then people said, just a minute, for diabetes only, you need 12,000 people. How come you're doing four stuff with 3,000 people? And the answer is because between 65 and 80, they're going to get any of those conditions. So we need less people, okay? Not more people. And, and this is very important also for pharmaceutical to know what kind of cost a study like that will get. Also, another uh, point is that NIA is going to uh, pay for a major biomarker uh, omics and uh, assessment for that. Okay, I want to stop here. I'll have one slide there, but I want to show you a movie that was done by Ron Howard, the producer. He did Age of Aging for National Geographic. And he came with us to the FDA. And the reason I'm showing this movie because I heard people saying the FDA hasn't approved metformin. Well, first of all, the study haven't been done yet, okay? But FDA doesn't have to approve, but, but the question is FDA welcoming this study? And I think this will answer it clearly, so let's go. Today, Dr. Barzilai and his colleagues will try to convince the FDA to consider their study. Uh, I need a microphone here. Yeah, forgot. Okay. In advance of their critical meeting, they gather. Maybe a microphone. I put. I'll put a microphone here. Prepare. We are here representing the field of the science of aging. And we think that this is a historical day for us because we're going to offer something that we believe is paradigm changing. I really want to frame the discussion today as what would we need to show in a clinical trial that would allow the FDA to approve a new indication for metformin for delaying multiple morbidities related to aging. Because we think metformin is the first one, but there are others that could be better than metformin, and we want to make sure that that's the template. We have that hypothesis that metformin is one of those rare opportunities where it might act in a general fashion. It's an attractive hypothesis. The trial is required to see if it's true. It started with a conceptual innovation, that aging can be modified. Then years of work by a growing number of scientists in labs around the world and years of convincing people of their ideas. Maybe this is what a breakthrough looks like. If the FDA accepts that aging can be treated, the scientists believe it will forever transform healthcare and medicine. I don't think that there are too many interventions in history that would rival the type of intervention that we're talking about here. It would influence almost everyone. As a matter of policy, the FDA does not allow cameras into official proceedings. But they did agree to an interview immediately following their meeting. We have 
lots of experience with claims to decrease the rate of heart attacks, to decrease the, uh, the degree of dementia, drugs that prevent strokes, uh, drugs that uh, treat your diabetes. We have lots of experience with all that. But what's being sought and being talked about is a more broad claim to prevent a lot of the consequences of aging. So the question for us is, how do you show that? We gauged their willingness to accept the general approach of targeting aging, something that they said right off the bat, we've never done anything like this before, and they were very receptive. Their hope is that a wide variety of age-related problems you know, loss of muscle tone, dizziness, falling, dementia, loss of eyesight, all of those things, to do them all at once with a single treatment, that might make a convincing case that you're doing something beyond just treating the disease. That would, that would be something never done before. They didn't have any problem with the general approach. And I asked them specifically at the end, this is what I think I'm hearing. You don't have any problems with the general approach. And they basically said yes. So. I don't think we could have had a better outcome. If you really are doing something to alter aging, the population of interest is everybody. It surely would be revolutionary if they can bring it off. There's no doubt about it. We always thought that the promised land is not in our reach. And I think that we are going to the promised land. The study will happen. The fact that the FDA is going to be part of it is really a major achievement and eventually will be the template and affect health span in the next decade. Okay. Uh, you heard it you heard it directly from the director, right? Um, so okay, so What's the, what's the reasons to do this study? The proof of concept wasn't part of what I aim to at all. Because remember, metformin have shown independently to do all those on many diseases, okay? But the proof of concept that you can cluster those together is, is really important. Second is the FDA approval. Uh, Third is for the biotechs and for the investors. They, have, they need to have a horizon. They want to know that, that a drug like that could be sold and it be so lucrative, right, if you have it. The discovery of biomarkers is going to be a really major part from a biological, from a geroscience perspective. I mentioned that it's a good template for the pharma because if they're thinking what to do, they can just follow the template of, of TAME that was already discussed and approved. Uh, I think the other points are more to Michael's uh, point from before on, on, the, on the public. Um, I mean, the wave that even an announcement will make that there's a, a drug at the FDA that's going to uh, have effect on aging, uh, it will have immediate uh, progress, but also when it's done, it can be immediately used. It's, it's easy to manufacture. Healthcare providers will be happy to pay for that. It's not going to be a problem. And of course, what we'd like to show is that there's a cost effect uh, uh, benefits of, of doing that. So I'm going just to uh, skip everything else and uh, just say, well, I, I wanna say that uh, our centenarians are example of people who live healthier, 30 years healthier than others. Uh, even at age 100, 30% of them don't have a disease. They have a contraction of morbidity, which means they die within weeks rather than years after they have a disease. And the CDC have shown that people who die over the age of 100, it's third the cost of people who, who die uh, at the age of 70. The point here, there is a population who kind of tells us where we can go, okay? We don't, you know, it's within our, uh, you know, human's lifespan. Jan, Jan Vig uh, did this great paper, it's a statistical paper, 115 years, without needing to change everything about our biology. So uh, we die at, in the United States at 76, so there's a lot of lifespan that we can uh, realize. And I think the nice thing that happened uh, just like a meeting like that, is those organizations here are working together 
to really make the public more aware uh, of, of our needs. And I really think is the best way to predict the future is create one. And I think in this room, many people are creating the future and that's why I'm so exciting, excited and I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Barzilai, for this great presentation. We can take one short question um, from the audience. Raise your hand. Yes, uh, and Martin, can you have just wondering if you're willing to share the dosing of metformin that you're using in your studies. Um, the, the studies that I've mentioned aim to have 1,500 milligrams um, as the daily dose. They didn't achieve it in, in all the people, and there's no good dose response for many of the effects. There's dose response for diabetes that says that 1625 is the maximum, is, is the most effective dose. So we had a discussion because some people say, okay, but it's the elderly, you should give them less. And some people said, but it's longevity, give them more, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but we decided we're aiming at 1500 milligrams, we're giving extended release that have less side effects. The side effects really appear in the first week. And if after a week there is a, uh, the three, six percent have diarrhea, that means they don't have this transporter that gets metformin through the gut, so they don't have it on their cells either, so you give up on them. So there are trade-offs. But I want to say another important thing. I know you didn't ask that. Uh, metformin is, has never been shown to be good to people less than age of 50 unless they have diabetes. And I think Jim said before, the, the, somebody mentioned the antagonistic pleiotrophy. Not every drug that's good for you when you're aging is as good for you when you're young. For example, metformin decreased IGF-1, which is good when you're old, but it's not good when you're young. Metformin decreased testosterone. Metformin interferes with muscle growth because it, it is, it's also an mTOR inhibitor in some ways. So I wouldn't give a 36-year-old bodybuilder metformin, okay? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> of course. Um, I have a question about the uh, sort of timing of dosing and whether or not you could consider like interval dosing, because I guess um, you could have like a peaks where you, which is maybe more physiological in terms of. Uh, I, I, I totally agree. It's, it's very much on my mind. But remember, what we told the FDA is we have preliminary data, right? And the preliminary data is how those people, what dose they did and how they took it. Okay, and, and it's, by the way, it's 30% effect of intention to treat. You know, one of the stupid things we're doing, hey, PhDs, listen to that. One of the stupid things that we're doing in papers, it's intention to treat. L let's say that 30% uh, of the people either had to stop metformin because of diarrhea or uh, they didn't take metformin or they dropped from the study, they're still included. And we, I, I think it's important to tell the patient, if you take metformin, <laughs> you have a 50% effect, not a 30% effect, okay? Great point. Thank you so much. And thank you for giving us a very optimistic outlook into the future.